Today's startup got started from a crazy tweet by Trump. Trump posted a classified 10 centimeter accuracy image from one of the most highly top secret classified spy satellites. And people didn't even know that this was what was possible. It was crazy. Today we're gonna sit down with the founder of Albedo Space. His satellite will be so good, it'll provide that level of images, but without spending billions of dollars to do it. That's why Initialized led a $10 million round for this company. Computers can now see, and with Albedo, they'll be able to see the world with clarity that was never possible before. This is gonna push forward everything, from better maps for autonomous vehicles, to better wildfire detection, to save people's homes. Albedo Space is a big deal, and we're really proud to be a part of it. Let's get into it. Topher, thank you so much for joining us in the channel today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Gary. Super excited to be here. So to start off, what is Albedo? So Albedo designs and operates low orbit satellites that capture both visible and thermal imagery at the highest resolution commercially available. Visible is nine times higher than what's available today, and our thermal is a thousand X higher than what's available today. I mean, that sounds like a really big breakthrough if you really look at it. I'm gonna throw something on the screen right now. Yeah, walk me through what we're looking at today. Yeah, so this is a representation of the state of the art today, 30 centimeter resolution. And then now you can see the 10 centimeter image, which shows a lot more detail. So for property insurance applications, they really need that kind of 10 centimeter, 15 centimeter resolution to do uh, roof measurements and, and have that accuracy. And then just in general, in, in terms of information, we can see what type of car that is. It's uh, the color, uh, it looks like a sedan. And then we have, you know, four chairs that you can count on that patio furniture and, um, you know, a lot of the applications are not as intuitive as you would expect with satellite imagery. And so just more information, both from a computer vision accuracy perspective, as well as new applications, there's a lot of potential here. Yeah. And then on the thermal side, being able to see, you know, not just 9x better, but actually a thousand times better than what is commercially available. That's a real breakthrough. Yeah, we're really excited about the thermal uh, imagery. It's kind of like a new data set on the commercial market as there's a few satellites that do thermal today from space in the 70 to 100 meter regime. But because we're doing such high resolution visible, we have the opportunity to capture the long wavelengths of thermal at a much higher resolution than what's available today. So not only is it better, it's uh, quite a bit faster. You know, how, what does that do for your use cases and how, how can you make it that much faster? Yeah, so there's a lot of applications that need that imagery to be fresh and not a day old, which is the case in a lot of scenarios today for natural disasters and agriculture is really sensitive to latency. So today, and one of the big enablers for us is Amazon, Microsoft are building these ground stations around the world that plug, basically plug our satellites straight into the cloud. And so we can really reduce that latency from days to you know minutes, hours. I mean, that's one of the really exciting things about what's happening now with space technology is that before it was one monolith and you had to spend infinite amount of money to get a billion dollar satellite up there. And, you know, you just mentioned, you know, AWS being able to do things for you at this level. I mean, there's a whole ecosystem out there and you can put together a, an amazing service now, you know, uniquely focused on the part that only you, you can and need to do. Yeah, exactly. Like only build it if you have to kind of thing. So with uh, the ground stations, I kind of talked about that, but also in terms of satellite components and hardware, there's all these new space companies building commodity buses and, um, and different parts of the satellite, um, as well as on the launch side, huge cost reduction there. Let's get into the use cases because that's where, you know, the rubber hits the road on better, faster, cheaper, but for who and how. I'm really excited about these applications. Walk me through a few of them. Yeah. So our customers and applications kind of fall into two different categories. One is customers that have been limited to aerial imagery until albedo because they need that 10 to 15 centimeter resolution captured from planes. And then the other group is applications that are computer vision based and super sensitive to resolution and the accuracy improves significantly with high resolution. So 
in the aerial imagery case, uh, mapping companies and property insurance companies use a lot of imagery today, general map making like you see on Google Maps, but also HD mapping and autonomous vehicles and augmented reality as those become more prevalent. And on the insurance side, you know, evaluating weather damage, remote underwriting and property characterization, measuring roofs. Those applications will get all the benefits now from a satellite where you have the global coverage, the higher frequency of updates and the on-demand tasking that um, kind of get both the aerial resolution and the, the benefits of a satellite. We were um, earliest investors in cruise automation, which was sort of like a hard tech company that showed that you could make something that was highly uh, pragmatic in the autonomous vehicle space before it was Google X and maybe it would never ship. And uh, here we are today with, you know, multiple multi-billion dollar companies that are far more practical than they were. And uh, that's the company that really taught us that computers can see now. That is playing out here with Albedo too. Computers need to be able to see with extreme centimeter accuracy. The more that software can interface with the real world, then the more that that software and those software companies can actually be hardware companies. <laughs> like they can actually touch the real world and have a much deeper impact on all of us. And so these applications totally resonate with that vision. You know, what about on the thermal side? Uh, you can see here this image of a power plant and there's this group Climate Trace that is trying to standardize emissions reporting for the entire globe. And uh, transitioning to the thermal image, you can see that actually only two of those four towers is active, and that's because the thermal is imaging heat. So Climate Trace can take this heat signature and combine it with other uh, fuel type and, and the service properties of the material and calculate accurate carbon emissions day or night from every power plant in the globe. Uh, so that's one example of the thermal. And then when you combine it with visible, uh, you can do things like irrigation detection or irrigation issue detection on uh, for agriculture, as well as uh, just general more information about vegetation. So like utility companies are really trying to get it together with wildfire prevention today. And they right now spend about $14 billion in the U.S. alone on the vegetation management problem around power lines. And they do that with helicopters and driving trucks along power lines and are starting to move towards using imagery for that to increase the frequency of updates on more of a monthly basis to, to map those high risk areas. Yeah, the, all of those are ridiculously huge use cases. I mean, on the agriculture side, one of the things we've been tracking is if you have better data about your crops, um, you can grow them far more efficiently. And, you know, it's sort of crazy that even today, um, a lot of people don't use any data. They you either have to resort to very expensive sensors or aerial imagery, or they literally have a person in a truck drive around and uh, take notes on what's happening. And those sort of manual systems, they are quite imperfect. To put it in perspective, you know, agriculture is obviously, it touches absolutely every single one of us. Everyone has a, of us needs to eat. If you can increase the efficiency of agriculture, even by a few percentage points, like you are meaningfully affecting global GDP, which is crazy to think about. You know, this is one of the more practical versions of applying the cutting edge of software and hardware to make the world significantly better, you know, in a very fundamental sort of touch everyone on the planet sort of way. Um, and then wildfires, I think are very close to, you know, I'm sitting here in uh, California and California is, has suffered immensely from lack of wildfire prevention, wildfire management and detection you would in a, in a moment make California far more livable and far safer for people. So there's really crazy impact here. I'm always curious, you know, how did you get into space uh, and space tech? And, you know, how did you come up with the idea for Albedo? My technical background and career is, uh, pre prior to this was at Lockheed Martin working on different classified remote sensing systems out in the Bay Area holding the role of kind of imaging science optics lead of translating early stage resolution requirements or image quality requirements into an actual architecture and, and satellite design. Did that for, for about four years. And then getting to the albedo story, you know, some folks remember this, but one of Trump's more famous tweets was a satellite image that turned out to be from a classified satellite. And yeah, I'll bring it up right now. But I mean, how crazy is that? I mean, it looks like people really didn't have a concept for how high quality this type of imagery even could be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it proved that 10 centimeters from space was possible. 
people saw it and, and were like, wow, that's that's way higher resolution. Uh, it looks like 10 centimeters per pixel and, and much higher than what we have available commercially. It caused a lot of buzz in our industry. A few months later, uh, I was reading this article about a panel of existing uh, CEOs of satellite imaging companies and different industry leaders talking about the tweet. And they the question was posed, would there be a commercial market for this level of resolution of imagery that Trump tweeted 10 centimeters? And they, the panel was like, oh yeah, there would totally be a market. It would be game changing and enable a ton of new applications, but it would cost over a billion dollars to build a satellite that would capture that because it would have to be the size of Hubble, which is the size of a school bus and just wouldn't make sense from a business model perspective. And so reading that and, and my time spent, you know, at the kind of like I was saying, translating resolution requirements into architectures and coming up with all the various combinations of, of what an architecture would look like, my gut response to that reading that article was, well, today you could do a lot of different things using uh, new space tech to fly the satellites much lower, shrinking the size of the satellite required to capture 10 centimeters. And and basically went down a rabbit hole of spreadsheets of, of like, how small could you actually get this thing to still capture 10 centimeters? Uh, discovered that regulations had changed that enabled commercial sale of higher resolution um, capabilities. And yeah, that's kind of where the Albedo idea formed. And so I pulled in our co my co-founders, Winston, on the product side. He's our CPO. We went to undergrad together, and he's spent his time on the user side as a software engineer at Facebook, working with imagery and LiDAR data for different applications in 5G. And then AJ, our CTO, leading up the space side of things, him and I worked together back in the day at Lockheed, and he's more of a general mission architect that has worked a lot of different types of space programs and it's kind of a jack of all trades when it comes to space. That's incredible. I mean, that that is one of the coolest why now stories to me because the best people to actually start businesses like this are the people who are deeply in, embedded in the weeds, actually having built these systems, having you know made design, design decisions, seen the trade-offs. I really like that. Here's this thing that human beings are capable of now. The state of the art seems to claim that you know, it's going to take a billion dollars to do it. And having been the person who is sort of even more of an expert than the experts, you can think about it first principles, figure out how to do it, and then do it. And you're mid-flight on that. I mean, that's really exciting. You know, earlier we were talking about there. there's a lot on the space side that's sort of enabling this. You know, you mentioned, for instance, AWS with base stations. You know, what else? It sounds like there's quite a lot that is coming together to you know, make this the perfect why now uh, moment for Albedo? There's uh, kind of four main enablers for this. And, and two of those enable us to fly the satellite really low. One of those is electric propulsion, which enables the fuel on your satellite to become much more efficient at the expense of low thrust, which means the satellite can't move anywhere quickly in space. But historically, you wouldn't fly low because the atmospheric drag would pull the satellite down quickly. And Electric propulsion enables us to stay afloat in the atmosphere for enough a long enough period of time for a, a good mission life. And then we're also designing an on-orbit refueling capability because uh, there's there's a big movement in on-orbit servicing and different companies like OrbitFab and Astroscale that uh, are working on refueling satellites that isn't available today, but by the time our first few satellites needed or down the road, we'll be able to extend that lifetime by flying really low. So the refueling and the electric propulsion enable that, that low orbit. And then just on the general cost side and infrastructure, like you said, the ground stations from, from Microsoft and Amazon, our satellites are bigger than, than normal in the new space world. They're like refrigerator size. And SpaceX has just brought down launch costs so much that now we can affordably launch bigger systems into space, not just kind of shoebox size satellites because Optics is still a very physics limited problem. And so we need a decent sized telescope to capture 10 centimeters. Albedo is hiring. So, you know, where can they learn more about Albedo and how can they contact you? Yeah, thanks for saying that, Gary. We're super, super excited to work with you and the team at Initialized. We are hiring. We have our jobs posted on our website, albedo.space. We're hiring for both ground software positions as well as on the space side. So. Uh, another thing that we, we recently decided is we're going to be a remote first company taking advantage of the past year of COVID and, and showing us that that, um, you know, is not only possible, but actually can help the business in a lot of ways. So 
uh, if you're you know interested in, in applying and seeing what we have to offer we're, we're hiring in the u.s and um, yeah would love to hear from you awesome sounds like your hubs will be in austin and denver both really amazing cities too but hiring everywhere yeah exactly and so for folks that, that want to go into an office we'll have hubs there exactly space is cool the use cases are cool uh, anytime you have a on the order of 10x to a thousand x better that's pushing forward technology and um you don't get that every day so thanks for hanging yeah. out yeah yeah this is a blast thanks gary